What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use Booleans inside of SketchUp in order to create some complex shapes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so Boolean modeling is a little bit different kind of modeling than the modeling you might think of when you uh, traditionally work with SketchUp. So the way that Boolean modeling works, right, is it takes solid objects. So let's say I was to take this cube and make it a group. Notice how this is a solid um, because it has no holes in it and no internal faces. Well, then you can use solid tools in order to interact two objects together like this. So let's say that I have two of these. Um, I've got one over here and one over here. What I can do is I can use this solid tools tool set that comes in the pro version of SketchUp. I can use it to interact the two objects together. And so in this case, right, we would want to use the subtract function. So we would want to subtract the first object from the second object like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to remove the material wherever those objects intersected. Right. So traditionally or usually what you do in SketchUp is you draw a shape like this, and then you extrude it to 3D. And then if you want a hole, you just draw on the surface and use the push pull tool in order to do that. But the Boolean functionality is a little bit different. And so what this does is this gives us a functionality that we wouldn't otherwise have inside of SketchUp. So let's say, for example, that we had a surface like this one, and I'm just going to draw a couple edges like this. And so imagine we wanted to remove material from the sphere right here. You can't really come in here and just draw on the surface and push pull it because this is made up of curved surfaces, right? But what you can do is you can come in here and you can draw a shape like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a group and make sure this is a group. And I want to make sure they're both solids, right? And so what I can do with this is I can interact these two shapes together by clicking on the option for subtract again. And we're going to subtract this model from this model right here. But what that does is that allows us to create shapes like this one that might be really hard to create otherwise. All right. And so another thing that you could use this for is you could also use this to remove material on a face. And again, I like to uh, I like to turn that hidden geometry on while I'm doing this, um, just so I can kind of have something to inference to on this surface. And I might tap the K key to go into X-ray mode while I'm doing this. But let's say that I wanted to remove some material off the end of this sphere. Um, you know, it could be a little bit tricky to do that manually. But if you have solid tools, this is really easy to do because you can just use that subtract function in here to remove that material from the face of the sphere like this. And so one thing that you might think about doing when you do this is before you remove the sphere, you might make a copy of it. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode and create a copy over here. Um, but then what I can do is I can activate the subtract tool, remove this from the sphere, but then I could take the second sphere and I could scale it down a little bit like this and then move it back aligned with this point. But you can use this in order to make something that, um, that, that kind of reduces a shape like this. So you could set this so it kind of reduces it down like this so that you've got kind of a step inward, just like this. Well, then what you might do, I'm going to go ahead and scale this back out a little bit. So I've got a fair amount of control when I'm doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this out just a little bit more right here. But then you could take these two objects and they're still solids, right? Both of these two objects are. Well, there's an option in here to join them together. So um, what you can do is you can take these two objects and use the union function in order to join them into a singular object. And so one thing that does is that gives us a really clear edge around the outside. But then also, and we'll turn hidden geometry off for a second. If I was to hide this face, notice how there's no additional faces on the inside like this. So then you can use additional solid functions on this. And so then I could do the same thing where I make this a group and then I remove this material from this object right here. So what you can do is you can make this curving shape that kind of steps inward. Well, then there's some interesting applications where you could like inset this in a little bit and then you could extrude it out and you could scale it. So if you wanted to model like an engine or something like that, this could be a really good tool for doing that. We could push pull this back in like this. 
And so this can also be helpful for creating like armor or cladding on an object. So let's say I was to take this object and I'm gonna do a control C to copy it. And then I'm gonna go outside this group and I'm gonna do an edit, paste in place like this. And what I wanna do is I wanna scale this up just a little bit about the center by holding the control key. And then I'm just going to draw a line across the surface like this. And so what that did, right, if I make a group, is it gave me a solid object again. So I've got this object right here that's a little bit bigger than the object that I had in there before. Well, now what I could do is I'm going to turn my hidden geometry on. I'm going to activate the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle that I'm going to use to slice this object. But I'm going to push pull this so it's got a little bit of thickness right here. So then I'll triple click on it and I'll make it a group. And notice how these two objects are now groups in here that I can use solid tools on. And before I do anything else, I'm also going to make a copy right here because I'm also going to create a vertical slice as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this object right here and then I'm going to click on subtract. I'm going to click on this right here. And what that did is that allowed me to, within this object right here, remove this material. So it's got this more like cladding look to it. And then we can do the same thing again. So we'll do a subtract and a subtract. And again, we we're able to model this cladding on top of this object. All right, and then one other thing I like doing with this kind of modeling is combining it with extensions. So we've talked extensively about uh, Fredo 6's suite of tools, including tools on surface and joint push pull, which I can link to in the notes down below. Um, but basically what those do is those allow us more options for working with complex shapes. And so what I might do in this situation is I might select this first object and use the split function in order to intersect it with my other object right here. Well, what that's done is that's allowed me to basically generate a face on the surface. Well, we've got a tool set over here from Fredo 6 that allows you to do things like offsetting objects on surfaces. So if I was to click in here, right, um, this is not something you could do with the native tools, but you could use this offset function in order to offset this in a little bit like this but then you could use the joint push pull function in order to push pull an object inward like this and first off we want to make sure that we're setting our borders to contour i'm going to turn generate as a group off but then i'm going to push pull this in like this and so you might push pull this face in or you might push pull this other face instead um, i kind of like that better because it gives me like more of a recess in here but if i push pull this in like this, I can use this to start creating recesses inside my object right here. And so we've got a little bit of Z fighting going on. So once I do that, I'll probably just uh, combine these two using the outer shell function. That way I'm not getting that flashing in here anymore. But you can see how you can use this to create pieces and parts of panels and other things like that really easy inside your models. All right, and then I don't want to get super in-depth on this extension, but I want you to know that it's out there. If you go to the SketchUp extension warehouse, there's a tool called Solid Inspector that you can download for free. And so what Solid Inspector is going to do, um, you want the Solid Inspector uh, squared or Solid Inspector 2 right here. This is a free extension from TomTom, Tom, and what it does is it helps you find issues inside of your model. So if you're dealing with a model that isn't a solid, you can't use solid tools, right? But what you can do is you can download solid tools, and what it's going to do is it's going to analyze your model and tell you what things you need to fix in order for your model to be a solid. So this can be helpful not only for um, doing things like using solid tools but also if you're trying to like 3d print objects or something like that you need to make solids well this tool is going to allow you to do an inspection and try to fix those either automatically or manually inside of sketchup so that's kind of an overview of how you might use solid tools or booleans inside of sketchup in order to create more complex shapes i'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you're using solid tools for i just love having that conversation with you guys i'll also link to a video on this page about solid inspector in case you want to learn how that works as well as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i'll catch you in the next video thanks guys